Ancient China is often lauded for its inventions, which played huge roles in the development of modern societies. In fact, China can lay claim to coming up with the Big Four, all of which transformed the world in some shape or form. Paper making, the compass, and printing were incredible innovations that impacted practically every corner of the globe. Now, the fourth invention was ironically intended to be a life-giving elixir, however ended up being one of the deadliest technologies on the planet, gunpowder. In the 8th century CE, Chinese alchemists were carrying out experiments and hoped that they could come up with a potion that allowed people to live even longer. They mixed, tested, and burned a wide range of chemicals and properties, such as sulfur, limestone, charcoal, lead, and potassium nitrate, otherwise known as saltpeter. Texts dating back to the 8th century reveal that this was the last mineral that proved decisive. When alchemists mixed saltpeter with sulfur and charcoal, they got an almighty explosion. Certainly not the ingredients for eternal life, but it's safe to say that it would have absolutely astounded them. Exciting nonetheless, I'd think. The Chinese call this remarkable new concoction Huo Yao, literally meaning fire medicine. Ancient texts describe alchemists mixing three main components that resulted in this explosive gunpowder effect. They were saltpeter, or potassium nitrate, charcoal powder, and sulfur. Chinese chemists experimented with a wide range of mixes, using three components with varying levels. It was soon obvious that saltpeter was the most important of these three components. This is because nitrate atoms provide their own oxygen, causing nitrate to rapidly combust. The early balance of components was something like 40% saltpeter and 30% each of sulfur and charcoal, but the modern-day ratio is roughly 75% saltpeter, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. Nevertheless, it didn't take the Chinese long to realize gunpowder's destructive potential in battle, and they soon put it to very effective use. Gunpowder was initially used in the form of fire arrows. This was simply a twist on one of the ancient world's earliest weapons, the flaming arrow. A gunpowder mix was added to the end of an arrow and fired either into enemy lines or over walls. Throughout time, the quest for power and domination brought about some remarkably ingenious innovations, even if they've been for destructive purposes. The use of gunpowder in war was a classic case in point. As the art of assembling gunpowder became increasingly refined, so did the weapons it was used with. By 1000 CE, the Chinese were using bomb or grenade-type explosives, flinging them at enemies from catapults. Gunpowder missiles proved not only to be effective in terms of damage, but also psychologically. Startled enemies were terrified of the deafening noise and accompanying smoke and flames, often fleeing just after a few gunpowder bombs had been released. Other methods were employed, with some coming from way outside the box. For example, gunpowder was sometimes attached to the bodies of huge oxen, which would then run into the heart of enemy lines, emitting flames, sparks, and a cacophony of explosions. Chinese soldiers would fill long bamboo tubes with gunpowder and then attach them to spears. They subsequently lit the spears and hurled them into enemy lines, severely burning anybody that they hit. The Mongols had furthermore taken a fancy to gunpowder after being introduced to it in the early 13th century during their wars with China. Both societies had been experimenting with other weapons such as the thunderclap bombs, which were used by the Chinese military of the Northern Song Dynasty when defending their capital of Kaifeng against the attacks of the Mongols. The Mongols typically came back even harder this time with gunpowder bombs of their own, which were hurled across walls with catapults. All the while, any military leaders who'd come into contact with gunpowder were frantically trying to outdo other nations in terms of how to use it most effectively. Weapons were becoming more precise and user-friendly, and the first guns began to appear in China, and then in the Middle East, in Europe. By the 12th century, Chinese soldiers were already using the earliest versions of guns. These very basic weapons were a kind of hand cannon requiring two people to fire. They were made of bronze and weighed around 3 kilograms with a 30 centimeter barrel. One soldier would hold the cannon and point it towards the target, while the other would light the fuse that was connected to gunpowder inside the barrel. Although these earlier versions of a cannon or gun were crude to say the least, if they were fired accurately they created plenty of hurt. As the Mongols began to expand their empire, they took gunpowder and its weaponry with them. Naturally, the rest of the world also wanted in, and the use of gunpowder began to spread west, largely via Mongol invasions. Just as with paper, the printing press, and the compass, gunpowder was introduced to foreign civilizations via the Silk Road trade routes. By the 13th century, it had reached the Middle East, where it was discovered by the Crusaders, who then took gunpowder into Europe. It was from here that the demand for gunpowder soared. European powders such as Britain, Spain, Holland, and France were locked into continual battles to acquire more and more territories and control of trading routes.
gunpowder meant more weapons could be deployed, which meant serious advantages in battle. By the mid-14th century, hand cannons were being widely used by European armies. By 1600, European powers were fighting tooth and nail for global ascendancy. Winning battles on land or at sea was heavily dependent on the supplies of gunpowder, and their expertise in the crafting and use of its related weapons. The cannons and grenades were cumbersome, often inaccurate, and also almost impossible to operate in wet weather. Crossbows were far quicker to reload and far more accurate. Plus, gunpowder was hard to come by, and it was expensive. A typical cannonball needed around 30 kilograms of gunpowder for one shot. However, there was no denying the sheer destruction that gunpowder-based weapons could cause. And it was for this reason that the great search for saltpeter supplies began. It could be extracted from manure in a process not unlike composting. However, that took around a year to produce crystallized potassium nitrate. It was far quicker and simpler to go straight to the source, which was generally found in caves. Some countries, such as Spain and France, were lucky. They had healthy supplies of potassium nitrate, which they tapped in to produce gunpowder. Others, like Britain and Holland, had to look elsewhere. When it was discovered that India had huge untapped reserves of precious saltpeter, trade routes were quickly set up. In 1600, the British East India Company was established, as was the Dutch East India Company and the French East India Company. The race to stock up on gunpowder was arguably the first time in history that global powers were forced to compete for the same technology. We can compare it to the quest for oil that took the world by storm in the 19th and 20th centuries. The saltpeter exports from India to Europe were massive. Britain went from shipping 100 tons in the 1620s to around 500 tons a year by 1660, and by 1740s exports had rocketed to over 1,000 tons a year, peaking at over 30,000 tons by the middle of the 19th century. Even as the European powers were amassing stockpiles of gunpowder components, they knew it was basically a necessary evil. To simply survive, any nation needed it. These days, gunpowder has been replaced by smokeless powder, such as cordite for gun ammunition. It's now manufactured around the world, but is mainly used for fireworks, ignition charges, and blank fire charges. What began as a scientific pursuit to enhance life expectancy resulted in the most ironic of inventions. Did the early Chinese alchemists intend gunpowder to become what it did? Obviously not. Would someone else have come up with it anyways? Very likely, yes. <laughs>